Hello and welcome to the Frontington and Backwards Railway. In this episode, I'm painting the sky. My layout is coming along nicely, but the more scenery I add, the more distracting those breeze blocks in the background look. It has always been part of the plan to have some back scenes, it just hasn't been top of my to-do list. Until now. The back scene isn't just for the back, though. It needs to wrap around the sides, too. And to make things just a little more complicated, I also have a so-called scenic break at this end of the layout, which will need two holes cut in it for the train to pass through. The station is meant to represent a terminus, but as you can see, it's actually a full loop, courtesy of this hidden bit of track. That just means I can run trains around continuously if I want to. But to indicate where that scenic break is going to go, so far I've been using these spare Hornby platform pieces. But that's all about to change. Before we go too far, I need to plan out how large I want the openings to be, where the trains will disappear. I'm not going to use a tunnel or a bridge to hide this. The plan will be to disguise it with trees and bushes, but that'll be something for a future video. For now, I'm using this piece of paper as a template to make sure I'll be cutting the hole big enough. Importantly, it needs to be not only tall enough, but also wide enough to accommodate my longest coach as it goes round the bend. It took just a little trial and error to find the perfect size. And I'm lining up the piece of paper with the edge of the board to ensure that I can accurately copy it onto the wood when that's ready. And I can use the same template at the back of the layout. As the geometry of the track is the same, it's just a slightly different offset from the edge, which is easy enough to take into account. My wood has ripened nicely, so it's time to harvest it and trim it to shape. I've grown my 3mm plywood so that it'll give me around 70cm of height, which should be enough to hide the wall behind the layout. And rounding off the edges gives it a nice professional feel. And now I can transfer my hole from the template to the wood, and cut it out with a jigsaw. and a test fit shows that it all lines up nicely. So I cut out the other hole and added a couple of triangular supports to the back to make it stand up. Unfortunately, I was a little hasty in harvesting my plywood, and the piece for the back isn't anywhere near long enough, so I'll need to join a few bits together. I tried wood glue initially, but it didn't hold firmly enough, and I'd completely run out of plywood coloured sticky tape, so I ended up using screws instead. Not quite as neat and tidy, but it should be okay. Dropping the back back scene into place was a little tricky on my own. But I had fitted some brackets underneath for the wood to sit on temporarily, so that it didn't just slide all the way down the wall behind the layout. 
and once in place I drilled through from the baseboards and bolted it all together. It's only finger tight at this point because it'll need to come back out shortly, because sky isn't normally wood coloured. And to resolve that little issue I watched a couple of videos on YouTube, so I'm basically an expert on the subject now. The technique I liked the look of best was to use blue spray paint, as that looked quick and easy. So I bought some sky blue spray paint and tested it on a spare piece of wood. Unfortunately the coverage wasn't anything like what I was expecting. Even after several coats it was still little more than a light dusting. I thought perhaps the problem was that I hadn't used any primer, so I bought some white spray primer too. That hardly did anything. Now, the bottom half of this test piece was primered, the top was primered and sprayed with several layers of blue, and the wood grain is still very obvious. Basically spray paint just isn't thick enough to cover the grain or the colour of the wood, which means YouTube is wrong. Or the bit of it I watched at least. I also tried some of my kids paint to see if that might cover better. It was certainly better but the wood grain still showed through really obviously, which is no good at all. So then I got pondering about covering the wood with paper, and perhaps I could use a roll of white paper, glue that to the wood and spray paint onto that, but gluing paper to wood without it wrinkling sounds like a recipe for further disaster. I mean, the bare wood is definitely an improvement over the breeze blocks, but it's hardly convincing, so I needed another solution. That's when I turned to the wisdom of Facebook, and sure enough plenty of people came back with recommendations, chief among which was that emulsion paint would have been a much better choice, as it's much thicker than spray paint. So I bought a tin of sky blue emulsion from a local hardware store. Now I'll admit that I've never actually used emulsion paint. I've never painted a wall, so I've never used the stuff. But a quick test on another spare piece of wood showed that it really did cover beautifully. It's a little light in colour, but I can work with that. Piece by piece each part of the back scene got three coats of paint, applied with a small roller. It covered really well, so the third coat was probably unnecessary, and I've still got loads of this paint left. If I ever do need to paint a room in the future, guess which colour it'll be. With that base coat a resounding success, I thought I'd try and make use of at least some of that spray paint I bought. I had a can of white as well as the blue, so I thought I'd try applying that lightly to the bottom half of the boards to give a sense of some haze in the distance. It's subtle, but I think it works. To be honest I'm not going for lots of clouds, I want something deliberately plain. That's partly because I want to depict a cloudless summer day, and partly because it'll also make it easier to cut out the sky in photos and videos and add other effects as well. Thinking ahead, you see. Then I just had to reinstall the boards back on the layout. The self-standing one was by far the easiest, as you might expect. The one at the back proved to be an absolute pain in the bum, because the bolts wouldn't go back in. I think I'd been a little eager with my emulsion paint, which had made the holes just a fraction smaller than they'd been before. But after a lot of huffing and shoving and fiddling, they did all eventually go back in. And the final end panel was screwed in place, as that was easier to get to. The final result is pretty good. The blue is a bit washed out in this light. It does look slightly better in real life, honest it does. Hopefully that'll be something I can improve with better lighting, which I might come back to in a future video. The white haze is definitely subtle, 
and you'd be forgiven for not noticing it at all. As for the horizon, the plan eventually is to add a few small hills, but again, that'll be a topic for a future video. Speaking of which, if you enjoyed this video and you haven't subscribed, maybe you should, as that's a great way to make sure you don't miss my next tale of mishap. I also post sneaky updates on Facebook, and sometimes Instagram too if I remember. But that's all for this video, bye for now.